I'm Jefferson, alongside me, the one with all the holes in his game, Swiss Cheese, and we're with the Disc Golf World. Don't worry, This Week in Disc Golf will still be coming out later today, but we still have to recap the first round of Waco. So you guys will be getting two videos today. The first day I got to Texas, a local described it to me as Wacky Waco in relation to the weather, and that couldn't describe round one any better. A cooler day to start with some breeze, but nothing that would be considered abnormal. As clouds rolled in at around 1, the play would stop and be put in a weather delay due to lightning. Good thing there wasn't much rain, but there still was about an hour break before the round got going again. For some, this could have been a good chance to restart, but to others, it was a momentum killer for their round. After the delay, the day would continue to have more wind, which makes the play at Brazos that much tougher. Essentially, the 9 open holes would require more touch with gusts, but hopefully the 9 wood holes were able to block some of it. The only big change was removing hole 15 and adding a brand new hole 17. Overall, I don't think it was a bad decision, but make sure to comment below your feelings about all things round one. Enough wasting time, Swiss hit them with the FPO recap. With her first tournament back in the States to kick off her season, everyone was looking for Kristen Tatar to continue her last year's dominance trend right off the bat. Forgetting she was only recently removed from Estonian presidential gala events, ballroom gowns, and Porsche rides. Trading it all in for the love of the game, rent-a-cars, Airbnbs, tour grinds, and the stark realization she is nowhere near home when arriving in Waco. Kristen came out of the blocks flat, only scoring a single birdie on the easier front nine, where she uncharacteristically missed some C1X putts and parred hole two. The par four hole was the easiest on the course. Owen Scoggins came out firing in the wake of Tatar's sluggish start, going six down on the front nine, capping it off with three straight birdies. She remained clean in that span while stacking birdies on the front half, allowing her the freedom to play some of the more difficult holes on the back half for manageable pars. Missy Gannon followed close behind with a five under in the same stretch, quickly stumbled after with bogeys on 10 and 12, and with a few birdies on the back half, finished only three under for the round. In classic fashion, Tatar was able to turn up the action on the back half, scoring five birdies on the first six holes on the back nine, moving her quickly up the leaderboard like many expected. Tatar would finish the back half with two pars, a single bogey, and six birdies, finishing the round at six under, still well in position, chasing only two strokes of leader own who was able to maintain her lead by managing the back with a veteran touch and, like always, with her putter scored only a single bogey on the entire round, and still picked up three more birdies on the final nine holes. She would go on to miss three total putts on the day, and only one in circle during the windy round, and surprising most, tied for the most birdies on the round against the entire field. Holland, who tied her in birdies, still shows that she stacks birdies on the course, yet costly bogeys, including a double on 14, would keep her tied for fourth with a four under, but also off the lead card. Ella Hansen, who comes into the event with the made-for-the-daytime Emmy storyline, looking for some retribution after her brutal spiraling loss last season, throwing it away literally on 18 with some very costly mistakes prior with bogeys late. She finds herself only one stroke behind Own, with the only difference between the two being an additional bogey for Ella. Natalie Ryan's putting did most of the carrying for the round and on to lead card for tomorrow with a four under. Ryan was 100% in C1X, going 11 for 11 within that range. And in honesty, Ryan needed it. Ryan was below half the field in fairway hits, but was able to finish in the top five, T to green. Heading over to Laco with some similar anticipated windy conditions, it'll be interesting to see how the ladies will fare. Can Owen score enough on the more open courses to be within striking distance back at Bravos? Ella, Holland, and Tatar are anticipated to take control of all the action over on Laco, with scores being relatively tight and windy conditions with precarious OB, the stronger drivers of the FPO should allow easier approaches on the longer course and more room to separate from the pack. Beth at 69. I just told myself, you've got to will this one in there. Whatever you have, just will it in there. This man is unbelievable. This is what athletes live for. This is the moment. Over on the MPO side, the people's champ Greg Barsby started out hot earlier in the day, setting the pace with the 12 down, which included a bogey on hole 9. More impressive, he technically only had 3 putts, 2 from circle 2 and 1 from C1X. The other 10 birdies were all bullseye hits. Is that a sign for the course being too easy? I don't know if I'd go that far, but good thing is tomorrow they'll be at Laco, which will be a big scoring separator. 
Don't be surprised if some names on top right now don't stay there. James Conrad started his round with seven straight birdies going 12 for 12 inside C1X with his longest putt coming in at 22 feet. To say he shredded Brazos would be an understatement. Same could be said about Nicholas Ansela, who would be the last person to have a share of the lead. Even with the bogey, Nicholas had a great round going 13 for 13 from C1X and smacking a 75 footer for his only circle two look of the day. Or does that not count as circle two since it's farther than 66? I'm not sure how all that stuff works. Ezra Robinson has already had his breakout party along with several pop-offs for him to be ignored any further. And day one at Waco was no different. He jumped out to a quick 11 under on the first 12 holes, only not picking up hole four, and simply followed that up with seven straight birdies. Even with a bogey on 12, he would quickly respond with a birdie right after. He was dominating off the tee, finishing the round top in C1 regulation and only third in C2. Scored the most birdies on the day and went into the final hole 13 down and atop the leaderboard. But 18 is where dreams go to die, especially in windy conditions. The par 3 with one of the best known water carries on tour is consistently the most difficult hole statistically and has crushed many in its wake. Unfortunately for Ezra, he would fare no differently with a very costly double bogey that knocked him off the lead card completely. Credit Ezra for running hole 18 at all in those conditions, but it might end up being costly. His first off the tee going deep into the woods only to throw the approach OB right after was hard to watch. That being said, the way Ezra is scoring, he is far from being knocked out of the competition and should be a contender on both courses. His touch should translate well on Laco and does have enough power to place him in similar positions as the farthest throwers on tour. Anthony Barella has been the bulk of the buzz surrounding the early season and this tournament would be the same. Even with a slow start with a couple of poor upshots and some circle edge misses early on the first few holes after picking up the easy birdie on one. AB's front didn't start well or finish strong either, with a costly bogey on nine after four straight birdies. Fortunate for him, it would be his only blemish on the round. AB would finish strong going seven under on the back while picking up a birdie on the difficult 18, putting him on lead card tied with Ezra at 11 down and only a single stroke off the lead, while heading into open ball golf courses with a ton of hyzer opportunities, as he is currently the clear favorite on the Laco property. His putt has yet to fail him this season, and with his distance off the teeth, that locks him in more scoring opportunities than most of the field. Nate Sexton showing everyone that he's more than just a great commentator, but he can still sling those discs. Big Germ might be talking retirement, but now that the cash streak is no more, we're about to see the overly aggressive Sexton. No condom at all. He would play a clean round up into the last hole where he would throw his drive OB and ultimately take his only bogey of the round, putting him two back of the lead. Joey Buckets would suffer the same fate, but instead of throwing OB, he missed his circle two putt for par, finishing 10 down just like Kyle Klein who would do it without a bogey. The finishing holes of the Beast made up three of the four holes that averaged over par for round one. The hardest being hole 18. Really would make a great finishing hole for a tournament. Not too far behind is hole 17 for reasons we all know. Tomorrow the players head to Laco for a complete opposite style of course. Let's hear what they have to say about the change. First thoughts, it's a golf course. Open shots. Very open the first, I would say, 12, 11 or 12 holes and then Somehow we magically find some trees out there. Front nine was pretty easy, and then the back nine got a lot more difficult, especially toward the end. Distance is not that far, but got to be placed in it properly. The wind direction is going to play a huge factor, I think, in how these holes score. From all the complaining I've heard, it is not that bad. I don't love it, but it can grow on me. If you want to hear what 25 professional disc golfers have to say about the new addition, check out the video right here. Other quick hitters from round one of Waco, Jake Wolf snagged the first ace of the season in hole five with the classic submarine sidearm. Our boy Tomas smacked hole eight for an ace as well. Jared Stoll goes over top of everything on hole 17 and parks it. He capped it off with the birdie putt this year for some redemption from last season. That wouldn't be the only eagle Jared would card either as he also got the 555 foot hole 13, which another one of our homies Kale Longquist was able to get too. If you don't know the name, write it down now or I'll see you on the bandwagon soon. Emerson, Keith, and Raven Newsome both made their circle two putts for the Eagle on seven. Also, Connor Rock and Elijah Bick would be the only two to get the Eagle in hole 15, each with their own 80-footer. If you looked at the bottom of the FPO leaderboard, you would find Maria Oliva. Don't worry too much, she's playing with a completely fresh bag since she's left hers in Dallas. 
That's everything you need to know from round one of Waco. If you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to not miss out on this week in disc golf. That will be out later today. Oh, and if you want to see the pros talk about the new Lake Waco course, check out the video right here.